Vintage TI-3H. This is an LCD quartz watch, date unknown. Let's, uh, let's pop it open, see what it looks like inside. Overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm assuming this is the original uh, bracelet that came with it. As you can see, it has a very customized taper. And overall, it looks like the, uh, the plating is in good shape. Let's see if we can get out these, these spring bars. Okay, we've got one. Yeah, there's lots of spring left in that bracelet. Now, this is an interesting feature. Um, only one side of the inside of the bracelet is exposed to the spring bar. Do you see that? There we go. How are we doing on dirtiness? Not bad. I've seen much, much worse. Maybe a little bit of a dent right over there by my thumb, but that's nothing. Once we get a little shine on this, it will spruce up. Let me point something else out that's nice. Um, very often on the edges, you get the greatest area of wear. And this is very clean. I mean, that, that gold plating just wraps right around. I'm gonna do a little clean as I go. If you're wondering, by the way, I never really make mention of this. Um, this is a silicon soldering mat. I do all my, uh, my watchmaking projects on it. I'm looking for a pry point. So there's just this little bit of an overhang I get the uh, knife in there. A little bit of an overhang where you can get the watch back knife under the, uh, the case back. So that's gonna be our pry point. Let's give that a try. No budge. I feel like this has become a, a theme on my channel is it's hard to get off these backs, but maybe that's, uh, maybe that's pretty common. I'm gonna try what I tried last time I'm just going to put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol around the edges and see if that doesn't um, work as a solvent and dissolve a little bit of whatever might be holding that back on. I'm milking the bottle. There we go. Just enough to run around the edges here. All right, I don't want to get it on the front. So let me just make sure the front's dry. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. I put a spring bar in just to uh, give me a leverage point, and I have a little bit of a more aggressive uh, watch back case remover. And I'm bending my spring bar. Okay, seemed like a good idea at the time. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, it did. First look inside. Yes! I gotta tell you, that's, um, much cooler than I thought it was going to be. Battery is a 393. I'm wondering now what the vintage is. So let's pull out the battery. I'm hoping that it's clean. What do you think? 50-50 chance? Clean. Look at that. That is the officially the cleanest battery that I've ever pulled out of a, uh, a vintage digital watch. New batteries are on order. There's a copper battery connector and there is some green gook on there. So it doesn't look bad from this angle, but we definitely have a little bit of cleaning up to do um, at the very least, just to make sure that that's a good contact on the uh, positive uh, sidewall of the battery. And I'm going to use my Rotico on a stick just to see if I can lift the movement out. We'll take a look at you in a second. Oh, that may have been one of the problems. It looks like that spring was not against that little pusher. Let's see, can we remove this? Yeah, it's just a tension fit spring. I didn't think it was going to expand that big, but that was holding in the pushers. And can we just push this one into the case? Let's see. Yes. Another look at the case. It's actually very clean inside. The glass crystal, I'm guessing it's glass. Let's see. Yeah, that sounds like a glass crystal. What kind of signs of wear and tear do we have on the movement? It's looking pretty good. I can see the LED segments. The writing all looks clean. It's all uh, painted on. And 
I'm not going to mess with that. I might clean it a little bit. Hey, you know what I did to the last digital watch that I tried to clean up the face? I'll put a link. Check out that video. What's the year on this watch? I don't know yet. I'm going to put a guess of right around 1970. So let me know in the comments below if you think that's a good guess or whether you know more definitively and you want to set the record straight. Hey, look at that. I got the crystal out. Oh, you know what? That's acrylic. That's not glass. All right, cool. We'll polish this with some poly watch. Here's a little cleaning tip for these expansion bracelets. Some of you may have seen me do this in the past. Um, what I like to do is take the bracelet and just wire the ends together. And then I slip this over this small little ball jar, which goes into my ultrasonic. I stretch it around the bottom of the jar. This gets dropped into the ultrasonic. And what it does is it holds the links open so the ultrasonic can get in there and, and really do a nice deep clean in between the links. Ready for the ultrasonic, wash up the case, and you know what? This one has a weird like rubber washer, insulator, shock absorber on the back. I'll just hand clean this. Throw in these two little pushers. Off to the cleaners. This jar fits well in the bottom of my ultrasonic. I will put water in this jar first so it doesn't float when I fill the outside. Add some of my magic soap. Add a little bit of uh, grease cutting, simple green. Flip it and run it. Oh, that's looking, it's looking nice and murky. And I'm gonna flip it to a Mobius 180. Put it back on with the gold side out. Give it another cycle. We're gonna take this all out. Let's dump out the parts. So we will bring everything over to the sink and uh, give it a good rinse. Let's take a closer look at the time module. Right now I'm looking at it under the microscope. First thing I'm looking at is the cleanliness and condition of the display and whether or not I can see any dirt underneath it. It looks like the dirt is mostly on top, a little blow. So one of the things that we might do is just clean it up just a very little bit. Of more importance, we need to clean up the uh, plus battery terminal. As you can see, we have what looks like a nice layer of oxidation. It doesn't look like it got further than that. So uh, fingers crossed. Now, do we wanna pull off the circuit board to take a look under it? Part of me does, but then part of me says, no, Mike, um, don't break it. So right now, there's clips around the outside. These little clips push off to the edge. Another clip there, three and four. But in addition to those clips, it looks like there's these plastic rivets and they look like they are posts going through and they stuck up through holes to align the, the uh, circuit board on top of the module. And then a hot press or something melted them and pressed them down. So I don't want to have to break these off. I just want to knock off any of these that are a little bit loose. And then I'm going to come back here with a cleaning swab with some distilled vinegar. Um, this buildup is alkaline and the vinegar is acid. So vinegar can neutralize this type of battery buildup. And I'm keeping the, uh, the movement pointed down uh, because I don't want gravity taking those little chips up into other parts of the movement where it could cause problems. But if this was a mechanical quartz watch, like with hands and a train of wheels, then you definitely don't want to get your um, little battery crumples on those parts. And I'm just gonna give it a very light puff of air, I'm trying to get it out of the watch and have it land on the work pad and uh, not atomize it because I don't wanna be breathing it. Once we get this little battery well cleaned up, 
we can put in a new battery and see if the watch lights up. Just a very little bit. Is anything coming off? Yeah, it's much better. Has the back side. A little bit on there. There we go. There's always one stubborn little crumb. It's battery time. There's our battery. Never heard of them. I got 10 for like $5. This is again a, a 393 battery. Is that making good contact? And, oh, hey, there we go. You know what? It, the contact wants to be a little bit better. Hold on. Let me knock this out. It's connected very uh, loosely by that thin piece of metal. So I'm just going to see if I can shape it a little bit better with these uh, round jawed pliers. Took a minute to think about it, but there it is. Great, we've got a display. So since we know that it at least lights up and, and shows us zeros, I don't mind the time spent to clean up the case and clean the watch up a little bit more. Let me take the battery back out. Let me just see if I can pull it out with a piece of Rodico. Okay. And it looks like there's four mounting points for the faceplate. One, two, Three. Well, I guess there's only three. I wonder whether this is just a friction fit. If it is, maybe I can um, ease it away from the module. It almost volunteered itself. Let's see, as I work my way over here, yeah, it looks like it's, there we go. It's just press fit. Cover plate is off. Just seems to be aluminum, and it looks like it's finished and brushed and painted on this side. So really, this is extremely unremarkable. It confirms what we knew. Texas Instruments Incorporated. I'm just going to use the smallest amount of isopropyl alcohol. Blow dry it with the hand pump. And as far as this, it looks like it's lacquered. So I'm going to assume that the paint is protected. Maybe I'll just use uh, some Windex. Really, I do feel lucky. It's in such clean shape to begin with. Good. I'm going to make a bold assumption here that the Texas Instruments on the faceplate aligns with the Texas in Instruments on the uh, LCD module. I'll just squeeze that into place. No tab on that side. Nice and clean and shiny. I'm gonna go uh, clean up that case. How does it look? Yeah, I think it's looking good. How about the business side? I don't have a lot of faith in how thick the gold plating is. Sometimes all it takes is just a little buffing with some plain natural cotton. You can get a little bit of the luster in there without the risk of uh, removing plating like you might when you use a polish. The case came out very nice. It wasn't bad before. And it's uh, it's even better now. It's clean on the inside, clean on the outside. Really pleased with how this cleaned up. There's only one flaw. The gold is, is off right there. And I, I think it's just a failure in the plating. But that's it. Not bad for 50 years old. Okay, there's the case, and these pushers look good. There's uh, there's little little rubber gaskets on these pushers, and since they're still pliable, I'm just going to put some fresh silicon on there. I don't expect this watch to be magnificently waterproof, uh, nor will I be diving with it. Vintage watches, I can't say they were waterproof to begin with. No, I mean that legally. I can't say that they were waterproof. Neither can the uh, manufacturers. Water resistant, perhaps. Next thing I want to take a look at is the crystal. As I mentioned earlier, this is a plastic crystal. I thought at first it was glass. It's not. It's just uh, friction pressed into the case. But I'm going to see if we can remove 
some of the scratches. I'll take a look at it on the microscope and we can determine how deep those scratches are, whether we can just use PolyWatch or whether we'll need to file it down a little bit first. I don't know how well this is coming out on camera, but it has its fair share of scratches on the face. So I think I might bring the overall surface down just a little bit with some sandpaper and then we'll turn to PolyWatch. So first things first, let's just see if we can get a little bit of a clean on the edge. Just take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, it looks like it's coming off. Oh, I like clean. There's some things that a microscope enables you to do. This isn't one of them. This is just a bonus, but it, it really is pretty amazing. Uh, the difference, like right there, see that? I would have missed that if it wasn't for the scope. That edge right there. It's just a nice example of what a difference it does make. And since this is a friction fit crystal and there's no gasket, it's nice if you have a nice, nice clean edge. And there's a good look at some of the deeper scratches. So my goal will be to sand it down to get below the level of the big scratches before doing some final polishing. Uh, but don't go so thin that I compromise the strength of the crystal. I'll try these sanding sticks in a variety of grits. Four, eight, 1,000, 2,000. Let's go try. I'm also going to do it as wet sanding. I like to use Windex. I suppose I could have used a bigger, flatter uh, piece of sandpaper, but I thought that this would let me uh, kind of keep a grip um, on the crystal by the edges. I could tell that my technique isn't working because I'm getting sanding in the middle where my finger is pressing down, not so much on the edges. So I think I'm going to flip around my method I'm going to stick this to my table and try using some surface tension to hold that down. Let me see if I can get a more even polish on it this way. Okay, well, we got something coming off there. And it looks more evenly hazy. I'm going to move to the 800 sanding stick. See how far that takes us. The 1000 stick. And we're back in with the 2000. Let's wipe this off real quick. Okay, well it's looking pretty even, just for fun. Since I do have more sanding sticks, we'll try 3,600 and then we'll jump up to uh, 7,000. Okay, so that's 3,600 and this is 7,000. And this just feels like I'm rubbing it with a cloth. That's a buff with the 7,000. I'm going to pause and I'm going to clean up. And when we return, we will do poly watch. I'm just going to use a uh, blob of Rotico to hold the crystal down. Give it a good shake. Then I just like to use one or two layers of cotton cloth and you just start buffing. And you can already see it getting more shiny. Rinse and repeat. Now PolyWatch will not work on glass crystals and uh, PolyWatch actually does make a kit for getting scratches out of mineral glass. I'm going to give it one more treatment of PolyWatch. Every time I do a video using PolyWatch, I get comments where people suggest alternatives, including toothpaste, baking soda, the stuff that you use to get scratches out of headlights on cars. It's worth a try. But I'll tell you, nothing works for me as well as PolyWatch. And I also feel like PolyWatch has some kind of oils in it which condition the, uh, the acrylic and they add to the sheen. We'll give the crystal a final cleanup. And then we'll get this watch back together. We're looking at the, uh, the top side of the crystal, and I, I think it came out very well and pleased. The center looks very clear. And it looks like we could have been a little bit more aggressive around the edge. You know, I, I just may try to do some poly watch on the underside of the crystal, especially down there. Looks like there's a scuff. Poly watch is it's addictive. Once you start, you just don't want to stop. One more application on the face, paying attention to those edges. Oh, that's looking quite good. I'm going to rinse this and then I'm going to give it a final buff. We'll be ready to recase the watch. We're at the watch press. Just to make sure we don't leave any marks on the crystal. There we go. Hopefully that's a a good snapping sound and not the other kind of snapping sound. We are in 
and that looks great. I think we can now turn our attention to reinstalling the pushers. I found something that I overlooked before. There's a gasket on here. Let's take them off. Can I get under them? Yes. So we will measure and replace that gasket. 31.85. So I think we could use either a 31 or a 32. I like to um, sometimes go one size down. So I'll go down to the 31 and then it'll stretch in place. And that way it, it doesn't get floppy and uh, get caught up when we close the case. I bought a uh, bulk, two bulk assortments of gaskets. And the bigger gaskets are 0.8 millimeter in thickness. The smaller gaskets are 0.5. And the, uh, the bigger ones actually start at 31 millimeters. Okay, there's our gasket. We'll put some silicon on him. And I also am going to put some silicon on the uh, little gaskets on the pushers. And we'll just pick up a dollop and just pull it through our fingers. So here's the pushers. So let's get a little bit of silicon on here. Now I think it goes in like this. So there's an index, a little notch over here. And with the spring in place, okay, good. We do have spring action. It's, it's time for us to clean everything up. Make sure there's no signs of dust on the inside. Final clean on the watch module. There we go with the battery seated. We've got numbers. Good, we have switching. And let's see if we have setting. And it is currently 6, 6.19 p.m. We'll call it 6.20 by the time I tool the cross to 6.20. Good, there's seconds. I'm guessing that that's date. And today is month six, day 27, 6 p.m., 6.20, there we go. And I think we'll use the watch press to close the back. And there we go. And we'll just do a quick visual. And it looks like it's nicely sealed all the way around. Man, look at that. That's just gleaming. Out with the old. Give this little cleanup. Flip the strap. Look at that shine. Look at that clear crystal and readable display. Hey, honey. Look, you're the first human to see this. I just finished this. Yay! That's my enthusiastic, supportive wife. She said, yay. Do you like it? Yeah. There's so much shine on this watch, I'm afraid that, that people's phones might like burst out in flames from- It's just from, too much bling. It's too much bling, yes. Bling, 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 bling. Here's what the button presses get you. There's the time, 6.35. Press it once, you get the date, 6.27. Returns to the time. Press it again while it's shown the date, and it goes into seconds. Well, thanks for joining me on this vintage Texas Instruments uh, LCD early digital watch project. Look at that shine. Love it. I'm Mike. The channel is Watch With Mike. Thanks so very much for joining me. If you like this kind of stuff, give it that thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And I look forward to your comments in the place below. Until our next time together, take care.